Hey makers, thanks for subscribing and welcome back to Middleton Made. Every Tuesday, I post to Ask Me Anything on my Instagram stories. That way I can engage with the community and answer some of the questions that you guys might have. Well, I thought it might be a good idea to make a video kind of answering some of the same questions uh, to not only hit a uh, wider net across the community for some of the answers, but also grow the channel at the same time. If you're new here, welcome to Middleton Made. I'm a brand that's primarily known for unique firearm designs with 3D printing as the main manufacturing process. If you have an interest in liberty and self-defense or just the Second Amendment in general, welcome to the channel and let's jump into it. The first question I have and a popular one at that is what printer do I use? Well the answer is the Tronxy D01. It's a pretty decent printer, however out of the box you may have to upgrade the firmware in order for it to actually be safe. Maker's Muse did a great video on this printer, um, a full in-depth review. That's kind of what led me to want to purchase it in the first place. When Maker's Muse originally did his review, the firmware wasn't updated with a thermal runaway um, sensor and to just shut it off if it detects that. If you update the firmware, it already has that, so it's not really a big deal. Beyond that first major concern, it's really not a bad printer. Um, just like a lot of the other cheaper Chinese printers, there's some parts that could probably be upgraded. The cooling on it really isn't the best. I haven't found a solution that I like and I haven't really had the time to come up with my own, so I use the stock cooling on it as of right now. But that is something that I will probably update in the future. The next question I'd like to answer is, what parts kits should I be buying right now? Well, by default, Air 15 and Glock are the most popular uh, parts to be used in 3D printing. So if your question is what parts kits should you be using specifically regarding 3D printing, um, I would push you towards those two. However, with parts becoming more scarce, and who knows with politics, um, how import laws and things like that are going to work in the future, Honestly, get whatever parts kits you can get um, at a fair price. If you find one on sale or with a good deal, pick it up. If there's not a design out there for it already, you can probably pay a designer to do it or learn how to do 3D modeling yourself and create something for the community. The homies over at Are We Cool Yet have been putting out some pretty cool designs using a wide variety of different parts um, from different parts kits. So if you can find a parts kit and it's somewhat available for other people to purchase as well, if it's a good price, I'd pick it up. A question that I've been getting a lot of DMs about is up next. Is the pill popper rated for 9mm? No, it's actually designed to fail if you fire 9mm through it. So the first baffle is actually designed to catch the bullet and to blow the rest of the can out forward. Um, rather than allowing a 9mm bullet to pass through it and have the expanding gases create shrapnel that will also travel back towards the shooter. I haven't tested this because I haven't actually printed the entire unit myself. It's an NFA item and I'm not going to uh, file a Form 1 for it. Um, but those of you that are willing to do that, the file's out there on DEFCAD. Um, it's only rated for 22 and uh, 17 HMR. It's been tested with uh, rapid fire on both and it will typically sustain rapid fire on 22. Um, I haven't tested rapid fire with 17 HMR or none of the testers have. Um, with that said, it will get much faster, much hotter, much faster with handguns. So if you're using a rifle, most likely you're going to be good as long as you're not firing full auto mag dumps over and over again. With all that said, use common sense. Know that PLA Plus melts at certain temperatures and becomes pliable at pretty low temperatures. So if you're firing a lot and you feel like your handguard would normally start to get warm or the barrel starts to get warm, it's probably about time that your plastic suppressor is going to have some issues. Be smart about what you print, be even smarter about what you share, and know your local laws. Another popular question I get is what program do I use to do all of my 3D modeling? I use SOLIDWORKS. Um, I started learning SOLIDWORKS probably about six or seven years ago now at this point. Um, this was before Fusion 360 was free like it is now. Um, and this was before I knew that Fusion 360 had plans to be what it is today. 
if I were to suggest uh, a software for you guys to use, I would push you towards Fusion 360. Reason being, SolidWorks is very expensive. I have access to SolidWorks through a couple properly licensed avenues. However, I'm very fortunate for those avenues because if I had to purchase SolidWorks on my own, it's very expensive. Um, but Fusion 360 is a lot more accessible. They're both very capable programs. SolidWorks probably a lot more so. Um, but for anything that we're going to be doing here in the like freedom-based 3D printing, the can't stop the signal type stuff, um, that should all be plenty handled in Fusion 360. The next question I'd like to answer is in regard to tolerances and clearances in my models specifically. Um, this isn't necessarily what it's going to be for other designers and their models. My models, I typically incorporate a 0 0.005 or 0 0.01 inch um, clearance between what the part is. So like, for instance, on the mac and cheese, where the trunnion is and where the wall starts that you'd insert your pin through. The exception to this is when a part is made to have a drill bit ran through it. For those situations, I run it exact to the dimension, so that way when the drill bit is ran through it, it's only taking off the little extra bits that the printer put in there from the tool head loop. This will give the cleanest and best fit for, say, trigger pins and things like that. If you ever have issues on my designs with a clearance, and it's what it's fully compatible with already, make sure that there's no elephant's foot, so that means any of the lower areas closer to the printing plate, make sure that there's no areas that are slightly jutting out. By using a razor to go along all of the edges, you can help take care of that. And also ensure that there's no warping. Most of my designs it, have important parts near the bed. So if you don't clean them up or you have warping, you may have issues with those parts fitting together and they may not function properly if they do. So post-process your prints and make sure that the edges are clean and then there's no warping. The last question for today's video will be, what filament should I be using for my 3D prints? Well, any of my stuff so far has been used with eSun PLA+. I'm hoping to make a video soon comparing some of the uh, different materials that you can print on a standard 3D printer without having to swap out the nozzle uh, for like high temp materials and to see what brands and materials will work best um, with my designs at least. I'll either have verification on what we've been using is the right choice, or maybe we should start looking at a different material. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for your support and the watch hours. I try to engage with the community as much as possible, so please subscribe, leave a comment down below, and if you have a meaningful question or comment, I'll get back to you. To all the new people on Buy Me a Coffee, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate what you're doing here and helping me do this full time. Without you, it honestly wouldn't be possible. And a special shout out to Hugo and Sean. You guys have been amazing. Um, and thank you for being top tier supporters for me. That's gonna wrap up the video for today. Stay safe, stay free, and you can't stop the signal.